Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie, The Ridiculous Six, released in the year 2015. In a Native American tribe lives a man named White Knife. He was originally a white man, but after the unfortunate death of his mother, he was raised by the tribe leader named Screaming Eagle. In the opening scene, White Knife goes to a food proprietor named Clem to buy carrots and butter. Outside, his fiancée named Smoking Fox is waiting for him when a group of thugs approaches her. They are called the Left Eye Gang because all of them have gouged out their right eyes as an act of proving their loyalty to the gang. The leader likes Smoking Fox and is about to abduct her before White Knife steps out of the shop. He calmly tells the gang to mind their own business, but they of course do not oblige. The gang leader believes that since they have outnumbered him, White Knife can do them no harm. But in contrast, White Knife beats them up even while doing a handstand. By the end of the fight, the thugs are hung to a pole while their leader is pinned to a wooden tank. The food proprietor, Clem, tries to shoot him dead for causing trouble. But White Knife stabs him with a carrot and returns to the tribe with his girlfriend. He is the bravest one of the tribe, even though he does not belong there by birth. The people have taught him everything about survival in the outside world. Later that day, a white man comes looking for his son Tommy, who he hasn't met since birth. It turns out that White Knife's real name is Tommy, and the man is his father, Frank Stockburn. Frank is a retiring bank robber who wishes to live his life on his own accord. He has developed a fortune out of stealing and wants to give it to Tommy so he can use the money for the tribe. Tommy accepts the offer upon Smoking Fox's request. He also reveals that when he was in school, his mother stood up to his bullies and one of them shot her dead. He blames himself for the death and has trained his entire life to not be a coward like he was. Frank reveals that he has buried the money under a pine tree on a nearby hill. Just when he's about to reveal the exact location, they're approached by Frank's former gangmates. Since he decided to keep his fortune to himself, they rebel that they want a part in it. The group is ready to kill the entire tribe for the money. To save everyone, Frank gives them a fake location that he describes as the windmill that sings. As the gang takes Frank away to said windmill, Tommy realizes that he's being a coward again. He makes it his mission to find his father's money, give it to the gang, and rescue him. When he goes to the hill to retrieve the buried money, he's faced with a problem. The hill is filled with pine trees, and he doesn't know which one has the money buried under it. After digging for hours, the leader's screaming eagle suggests he think of a different way to earn money. But $50,000 cannot be earned in a few hours. Tommy's only option is to steal. He wants to stay strong on his principles, hence he decides to go to the city and steal from bad people. The tribe see him off in a teary farewell. To hide his true identity, Tommy cuts his hair and dresses up in modern clothes. In the city, a sweet Mexican woman gives him shelter. As they chat, she reveals that she used to have fun with Frank Stockburn a long time ago. She goes into detail about their private time before Tommy stops her. He discovers that he even has a half-brother named Ramon. Tommy goes to meet him and finds him with his horse that has a diarrhea problem. They unite and Tommy tells him everything about the mission. Ramon offers to help since he is also desperate to meet his father. Following that, the two go to rob a bank to collect the ransom money. Ramon and his horse act as distractions while Tommy breaks in through a window. The bank manager gets a hint of this and runs to stop Tommy. Ramon meets a young man named Lil Pete. When he finds out they're robbing a bank, Pete reveals his father Frank was also a bank robber. Ramon realizes he is their third half-brother and includes him in the plan. Tommy opens the safe with the money and sees a note from his father that he had written years ago to someone named Johnny. The note asks him to go to the Jawbone Falls. Tommy manages to steal the money without getting caught. When the bank manager gets agitated, the horse defecates on him, giving the others an opportunity to run away. Somewhere else, the Left Eye Gang is plotting a way to avenge Tommy for humiliating them. Clem also joins their gang and gouges out his right eye, even though he's blind in the left. The brothers spend that night camping outside. While talking about their lives, Lil Pete reveals that he has an abnormally strong neck, so he's not scared of being hanged if they're caught. The following day, they reach the waterfall and meet a mountain man named Herm. He speaks in gibberish and is not as smart. 
but after he signs his life story, the guys realize that the man is their fourth half-brother. Tommy counts him in on the plan and brings him with the group. Following that, the brothers go to a salon where they can get information about the riches of the nearby city, plotting to rob them. While shaving their beards, the barber tells them about a pub owner named Smiley. He has a golden chicken nugget piece in his pub that is worth $30,000. He used to be Frank's associate and a bank robber before they separated. Later that day, the gang goes to a pub to plan the next move. There, they meet a man named Danny who claims to be looking for Frank. After getting beaten up by Smiley for mentioning Frank's name, he goes to the boys. Soon, it's revealed that he too is Frank's son and their fifth half-brother. Baffled by the revelation, Tommy asks all of Frank's sons to raise their hands. To his surprise, the pub's pianist Chico also raises his hands. The brothers name themselves the Ridiculous Six and join hands to find their father together. In the evening, the group attacks the pub. Some of them act as a distraction while others steal the giant golden chicken nugget. They succeed, but Smiley stops them outside the pub and holds them at gunpoint. Suddenly, Ramon hits him on the head with a shovel and accidentally decapitates him. Smiley fires a few rounds with his headless body before dying. The guys are shocked, but they quickly compose themselves and run away. At night, they light a campfire and sing around it. They bond over the shared love for their father. Then, the group meets a man trying to invent a new game named Baseball. He also happens to know Frank and promises to tell them about the singing windmill if they play a game against a bunch of people. The match starts and the man invents different baseball terms like the home run and strike. After the ball is lost in a home run, the Ridiculous Six urges him to reveal where the windmill is. The man discloses that it's a place called Sweet Hog Rog. Now that the group knows of the place, all they have to do is steal the remaining $30,000. For this purpose, they go to another town and decide to rob a jewelry shop. Lil Pete misbehaves with the sheriff's wife to gather everyone's attention. He is successful in making the entire town come to the market, but they have gathered to watch him get hanged to death. We soon find out that when Pete said he has a strong neck, he was not lying. He hangs by his neck and performs acrobatics in the air, surprising the entire town. While he keeps them busy, the others steal from a jewelry shop and get ready to escape. Just when the sheriff is about to shoot Pete to death, he is saved by his brothers. They run away with the money before being caught. In the following scene, the group is bathing in the river, excited that they're about to meet their father. Suddenly, the Left Eye Gang invades and holds them at gunpoint. Ramon sneaks underwater and manages to fire at them. However, the criminals steal their bags of money and run away on their horses. The brothers are back to square one and have lost all hopes of rescuing their father. But Herm hasn't given up yet. In his gibberish language, he informs them of gambling happening at Yuma that is hosted by Ezekiel Grant. Some of the wealthiest people of the state are going to be in the house. If the group manages to rob them, they can surely get their father back. Everyone likes the idea and sets off to Grant's mansion. Ramon disguises himself as a wealthy coffee trader and joins the gamble alongside his bodyguards, Chico and Herm. Their cover is blown when the wise Wyatt Earp suspects them. After threatening the rich men with a knife, they take all their money and run away. Following that, they travel to the Sweet Hog Rog but are confused to see no windmill. In turn, they come across the Left Eye Gang that has been buried into the ground up to their necks. It turns out that the man who abducted Frank named Cicero and his gang are behind their condition. Tommy checks the sand's temperature and manages to navigate the gang's path using the technique taught by his tribe. The group also saves the Left Eye Gang out of mercy. Ramon brings out an old picture of his father and shows it to everyone. In the picture, Cicero has a tattoo on his palm that catches Tommy's attention. The man who killed his mother also had the same tattoo. He knows that things will get messy when he meets Cicero, hence he decides to rescue his father alone, not wanting to put his brother's lives in danger. They take a rest at night, and Tommy uses the opportunity to write them a letter and run away looking for Frank. By the morning, he finally reaches the windmill and finds his father and the gang. He hands the bag of money to Cicero and urges him to show his hands. The tattoo confirms that he is in fact the one who killed Tommy's mother. The man points his gun at Tommy, but the protagonist has come prepared. In the blink of an eye, he hits Cicero with a knife that stabs him right in the forehead and kills him. 
The remaining gang members threaten to kill him, but the Stockburn brothers come to his rescue. Still, the gang has an upper hand because the brothers are outnumbered. That is, until the Left Eye Gang also takes the brothers' side. Eventually, the villains have to back off and run away on their horses with the money. Frank finally meets his sons, who he didn't even know existed till now. They inform him that they had to steal 50 grand twice, hence they ended up with 100 grand instead. The news changes Frank's demeanor. He whistles and calls the gang members from earlier. It is then revealed that Frank was never a good man. He just wanted a way to make more money without having to do anything. Knowing that Tommy will fight for his father, he used him to obtain the money. Now that he knows they have 50 grand more, he wants to steal it as well. After the brothers find out the truth, a shootout ensues. Frank had kept Smoking Fox hostage till now. He brings her out to threaten Tommy, but the plan doesn't work. During the shootout, we find out that the Left Eye Gang never gouged out their right eyes. They lied for the effect to look tougher. Eventually, Tommy and Smoking Fox manage to catch Frank and leave him in a tunnel where he is later caught by the police. In the last scene, Tommy is getting married to Smoking Fox. His half-brothers have also joined the tribe as the leader's son. They dance, sing, and have a lot of fun while Pete writes a letter to his mother about the happy ending. That was all from the video, I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.